Pluto is an icy dwarf planet lurking far from the sun in the most crowded and unsettled region of the solar system, a solitary world amidst the tumultuous expanse of the Kuiper Belt. In the early 1900s, astronomers regarded Pluto as the ninth planet of the solar system, but not long after, it became an exiled child, expelled from the once nine-member family. The distant distance of Pluto makes everything humanity can know and imagine about it a small, incomprehensible world, surrounded by a layer of perpetual ice and hiding in the bleak darkness. As the faint sunlight gradually casts its long shadow over the icy plains, a desolate land devoid of signs of life and dominated by rocks and ice emerges. It is a mysterious and captivating world that astronomers and space enthusiasts alike must pay attention to. And now, if you are ready, buckle up and prepare for our journey of exploration today to a perpetually icy world that exists far beyond the horizon. Pluto. How dark is space? If you venture far from the city lights to a remote countryside and look up, you'll find that the sky between the stars appears truly dark. Above Earth's atmosphere, space is even darker. Although we always see the twinkling lights of thousands of stars in the sky, in reality, the heat and light sources from the stars can be very distant, so far apart that they create dim, shadowy regions. The Kuiper Belt is a prime example. As the largest member in its separate realm, the space surrounding Pluto is equally dark and still. The most famous dwarf planet in the solar system exists at such a distance that even the Hubble's eye can only discern it as blurry patches of color. Situated over 40 astronomical units away from the primary heat source, Pluto's location has prevented it from receiving warmth from the sun's rays, turning it into a frigid, desolate wasteland. In the early 1900s, astronomers regarded Pluto as the ninth planet of the solar system. This distant object orbits the center of the solar system along a peculiar trajectory and takes nearly 248 Earth years to complete it. Thanks to its orbit's inclination of over 17 degrees, Pluto and Neptune have never collided despite their orbits partly intersecting each other. With a mass of about 1.3 x Trug, the dwarf planet, weighs approximately one-fifth of Earth's mass and one-third of the volume of the Moon, a relatively modest weight compared to other planets. Measurements indicate that Pluto's radius is just about Afarinshaud if compared visually, this dwarf planet appears diminutive, even smaller than the Moon and the satellites orbiting larger planets like Jupiter or Saturn. These characteristics make Pluto resemble other small celestial bodies such as Eris Ceres or Sedna. This is why it topped the list of dwarf planets in the 2006 classification. Based on the latest images, Pluto's colors are reproduced with shades of light brown, white, or dark brown, entirely different from the faint yellowish marks in the images captured by Hubble in 2002. As one of the coldest places in the solar system, the surface temperature of Pluto can drop to between 375 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit, turning all rocks, materials, and substances on the planet's surface into a massive block of icy cold. During the time of Hubble, observations of Pluto were so faint that further study of its features was impossible. Scientists spent quite a long time determining the characteristics of Pluto, such as its weight, radius, and size, because its distant orbit only just passed its closest point to the Sun, about 29 AU, in 1989. Since then, this small planet has continued to stretch its distance farther away, and it is projected to reach its farthest point at Aphelion in 2113. In such a position, observations are extremely rare, and studies can only rely on theories and conjectures. New Horizons to overcome the limitations imposed by observations that are difficult to conduct from Earth and the Hubble Space Telescope, a new mission was conceived, the unmanned spacecraft mission named New Horizons. It is an autonomous space probe launched into space by NASA 
in 2006 to carry out the first ever human mission to explore and study Pluto. After a journey lasting over nine years through the lonely expanse of space between planets, the spacecraft finally approached its primary target in the early morning hours of July 15, 2015. New Horizons had visited Mars, Jupiter, and Neptune before reaching Pluto and captured over 400 images of this mysterious dwarf planet. At the moment when the data was sent back to Earth after traveling a distance of 4.7 billion kilometers in 4 hours and 25 minutes, NASA engineers hugged each other and cheered with joy. This was the miracle they had anxiously awaited and hoped for throughout the nearly decade-long mission. Following the prolonged data transmission process over the next 16 months, a series of high-resolution images were stored and analyzed by NASA scientists. New Horizons acted like a pair of glasses for those who had lived with vague predictions about Pluto's mysteries for too long. At the moment when the images were fully decoded, humanity took another step forward in the study of mysterious and distant dwarf planets. Based on the available data, the National Optical Astronomy Observatory's Infrared Optics Astronomy Research Laboratory, led by Toad Lower in Tucson, Arizona, successfully expanded the landscape album of Pluto. The research team has added more images of the surface of Pluto not directly illuminated by sunlight, commonly referred to as Pluto's dark side. After successfully expanding the images, the hazy atmosphere of Pluto, illuminated by the distant sun, revealed a stunning halo of light surrounding the planet's dark side. At this point, the New Horizons spacecraft was positioned to primarily observe the southern hemisphere of Pluto, where it was transitioning into darkness as winter approached. This seasonal transition resembles the long, dark winter months at the North and South Poles on Earth, except on Pluto, where each season lasts for 62 Earth years. Despite the challenges posed by the planet's seasonal darkness, researchers were still able to extract valuable details about Pluto's southern hemisphere. This was made possible by the faint sunlight reflecting off the icy surface of Pluto's largest moon, Charon, which is about the size of Texas. This reflected light is referred to as Charon's light. It acts as a beacon providing sufficient illumination while the surrounding space around Pluto is too dark for observation. This Charon's light was just enough for researchers to uncover details about Pluto's southern hemisphere that couldn't be obtained otherwise. In a remarkable coincidence, the amount of light from Charon on Pluto is nearly equivalent to the amount of light from the Moon on Earth. They even share the same phase for each light source. Restoring details on the surface of Pluto under the faint moonlight was by no means an easy task. This problem is akin to trying to read street signs through a dirty windshield while driving toward the setting sun without a sunshade. Nonetheless, scientists persisted. Through tireless efforts, researchers could identify and study various features of Pluto's southern hemisphere, including geology, topography, and weather patterns. This information has significantly expanded our understanding of this distant, icy world and provided new insights into the mysteries within our solar system. The map obtained displays some prominent features on the obscured surface of Pluto. The most notable of these is the dark lobe-shaped region to the west, where neither sunlight nor Charon's light shines when photographed by New Horizons. This area remains inaccessible to sunlight or Charon's light during the imaging process, and researchers believe it could be a basin filled with carbon-rich material. Additionally, the research team also discovered another large, bright region located between the southern pole of Pluto and the equator. This prominent barren area stands out due to its high reflectivity and is believed to contain nitrogen or methane I similar to the heart feature of icy planes found on the opposite side of the planet. Researchers speculate that these ice layers may have been exposed over time due to erosion and the bright area could be a basin filled with nitrogen frost. 
The southern pole of Pluto and its surrounding areas have also garnered special attention from researchers because they are covered with dark-colored material that contrasts sharply with the lighter-colored surface of the planet's northern hemisphere. Researchers believe this difference is due to Pluto recently completing its southern summer season approximately 15 years before the flyby of New Horizons. During the summer, nitrogen ice and methane gas in the south sublimate directly from solid to vapor, while dark haze particles blanket the area. Researchers hope that the new data will help them delve deeper into this phenomenon, as it may provide profound insights into the planet's climate and geological history. Tomba Regio. We will continue our unofficial journey from the icy northern region of Pluto's icy mountain range, known as the Tomba Regio, named after Clyde Tomba, who discovered Pluto in 1930. Here, the New Horizons Atmospheres team observed Pluto's atmosphere at an altitude of 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometer, above the surface demonstrating that Pluto's nitrogen-rich atmosphere exists and extends over a fairly large area. This marks the first time humans have been able to study Pluto's atmosphere at an altitude higher than 170 miles above the surface. When the first images of this region were successfully restored from New Horizons data, observers were extremely surprised by its pristine, flat appearance, like a mirror. Discovering vast, flat plains without volcanoes and very young on Pluto exceeded all expectations before the spacecraft's flyby. This extensive region lies between the planet's equator and has the shape of a giant heart with tall mountain ranges surrounding it, extending about 2,300 kilometers. It covers about Shub or four of Pluto's surface area and is described as a vast plain amidst countless surrounding mountains. Tombo Regio is much lower than the surrounding areas, reflecting a young, relatively inactive terrain, simply a solid ice block. The absence of craters in the region indicates its surface is less than 100 million years old, leading to speculation that Pluto may be geologically active. There is a quite common hypothesis that the precursor of this region could have been a large impact crater filled with nitrogen snow. Pluto resides in a volatile region filled with numerous unidentified objects and asteroids, so it would not be surprising if it had been struck and left a large crater on its surface. Calculations show that between the core and mantle of Pluto exists a layer of ice over 300 kiloner thick, primarily composed of nitrogen and other gases such as methane. The impact could have left a deep crater and natural processes filled them with snow, creating a pristine, white area with no traces of geological formation. On the western lobe of the heart, the surface of the region resembles frozen mud cracks found on Earth and is unofficially named Spotnik Planum. The surface of this region is segmented and composed of irregularly shaped sections, each about 12 miles, 20 km, across. These segments are surrounded by shallow ridges seemingly composed of darker material. There are two working theories on how these unusual segments on Pluto were formed. One hypothesis suggests that the segments may have formed due to the contraction of surface material, similar to how mud cracks. Another theory suggests that they formed due to convection, similar to the rising of wax in a lava lamp. On Pluto, convection may occur within a layer of frozen carbon monoxide, methane, and nitrogen on the surface, driven by internal heat within Pluto. In addition to the uneven segments, Pluto's icy plains also feature long, dark streaks spanning several miles. These streaks appear to be aligned in the same direction and may be formed by winds blowing across the icy surface. The surface of the Tombaugh Regio region also exhibits patterns created by carving small pits through a process called sublimation. This phenomenon occurs when nitrogen ice on the planet's surface transitions directly from solid to gas, similar to dry ice on Earth. By studying this region and its unique features, scientists hope to gain new insights into the history and composition of Pluto, 
as well as the outer reaches of our solar system. Maculus. Moving further eastward along the equator, we encounter a long, sinuous flow resembling a black snake stretching for hundreds of kilometers. These features are collectively referred to as Macaulay, a name derived from various dark deities in different cultures. One of them could be Kroon Makala, the lord of the underworld in the Mandaean religion of southern Iraq. Balrog Makala, a fictional demonic race in Jarar Tolkien's mythology, or Vukub Kama Makula and Hun Kama Makula, is named after the two lords of death in the Kiche Maya Popol Vuh text. The dark spots, evenly spaced with irregular boundaries, form robust walls, extending into vast areas and metaphorically likened to bronze fingers, embracing the surrounding icy plains. They are divided into various sections, distributed in clusters, with some particularly notable regions, among which Cthulhu stands out. When examining images from New Horizons data, we can visually discern that this is the darkest area on Pluto's topographic map. It resembles a giant straight black snake with a reflective surface that reflects no more than 30% of the incoming light. The area of Cthulhu stretches for nearly half of Pluto's equatorial circumference, starting from the west of Sputnik Planum, with a length of about 1,150 miles, 3,000 kilodera, and a width of 450 miles, 750 ki. Cthulhu is slightly larger than the state of Alaska. The clusters of dark-colored objects in this region are speculated to be the result of a type of black ink formed from complex hydrocarbons called tholins covering the surface, formed from methane and nitrogen in the atmosphere interacting with ultraviolet and cosmic rays. The geology of Cthulhu exhibits various landscape features, from mountainous regions to flat plains to numerous volcanic calderas and cracks. The presence of calderas indicates that the continent has undergone billions of years of age, in contrast to the bright and caldera-free Sputnik Planitia. The enhanced color image displayed on the left side shows a mountain range located in the southeastern part of Cthulhu, stretching 260 miles 420 kilometers, existing amidst volcanic calderas with narrow valleys separating their peaks. The upper slopes of the highest mountain peaks are covered with a contrasting bright material against the dark red color of the surrounding plains, resembling layers of chocolate and marshmallow candies stacked on top of each other. No lazy explanation has been provided for these strange and puzzling features, indicating that further research is needed to understand them and the geological activities taking place on the surface of Pluto. Lowell Regio However, let's set aside the questions about the Maculas and move northward on the dwarf planet to a vast valley named Lowell Regio. Instead of being covered in white like the North Pole of Earth, Pluto's North Pole is strangely tinged with a yellow hue, adorned with wide ice mountain ranges up to 75 km wide, sculpted by ancient geological activity. The name Lowell Regio for these ice mountains is inspired by the American astronomer Percival Lowell, who founded the Lowell Observatory, initiating the search that later discovered the planet Pluto. Additionally, Pluto's North Pole also features gigantic pits over 72 kilometers in diameter and 4 km deep. Through the erosion traces on the mountain ranges, Researchers believe that this valley region has existed much longer than the sharp-edged mountain ranges in other areas of Pluto. These are remnants of an ancient geological era. Scientists have never seen this peculiar yellow color at the North Pole in other locations on Pluto. Descending to lower elevations and latitudes, the yellowish terrain gradually transitions to a grayish-blue hue. The infrared instruments of the New Horizons probe show that methane-rich ice is abundant in Lowell Regio, while nitrogen-rich ice is scarce. Its peculiar color may stem from the reflection of sunlight off methane-rich ice blocks. Due to Pluto's highly inclined axis of rotation for most of its life, it has used its north pole to face the light and heat of the sun. This may be the primary reason why the dwarf planet's atmosphere has continuously tripled over more than 30 years. 
Pluto's atmosphere is disappearing. However, recent studies also indicate that this dwarf planet is gradually losing its atmosphere. Astronomers on Earth first discovered the existence of Pluto's atmosphere in 1988. In a serendipitous observation, the light from a star gradually dimmed just before disappearing behind Pluto. This demonstrated the presence of its thin and easily distorted atmosphere. It was then that humanity learned that an atmosphere indeed exists in the icy realm. From 1988 until now, astronomers have monitored Pluto's atmosphere through changes in starlight. On the evening of August 15, 2018, researchers predicted that Pluto's orbit would pass in front of a star when observed from the United States and Mexico. Because the dwarf planet and its atmosphere are backlit by a star, a faint shadow of Pluto would move across the Earth's surface, similar to a solar eclipse on Earth. The central path of this stellar occultation would stretch from Baja, California to Delaware, prompting scientists to deploy telescopes along that path to study Pluto as its atmosphere is backlit by a star. In a brief two-minute span, the light from the background star gradually diminishes as it passes through the atmosphere of Pluto, then brightens again as the two bodies move past each other. Scientists can analyze the light curve to obtain information about the density of Pluto's atmosphere. The central flash only appears when the observer precisely observes the central path of occultation. In other words, it only occurs when Pluto obscures the background star, and the star's light is refracted or bent into a point at Pluto's shadow center. Put more simply, the existence of the central flash helps astronomers trust that they are observing the correct object and that their analysis of the event is as accurate as possible. And now, the question arises, why did we see a decrease in Pluto's atmosphere in 2018 after it had been increasing for some time? The cause of this phenomenon may be related to physical effects, similar to how sand on a beach retains warmth into the late afternoon, even though the sun is highest at midday. Pluto's surface is covered by a layer of ice, and its atmosphere is primarily nitrogen, produced when ice on the planet's surface transitions from solid to gas due to increasing temperatures. When Pluto was closest to the Sun from 1979 to 1999, its surface temperature rose, causing the density of its atmosphere to increase. As Pluto moves farther from the Sun, its atmosphere begins to freeze and fall onto the surface. However, it does not immediately decrease due to the inertia of the ice. This phenomenon is quite similar to how the sun heats sand on a beach. The sunlight is most intense at noon, but due to the characteristic physics, the sand continues to absorb heat throughout the afternoon, so it will be hottest in the late afternoon. The continuous presence of Pluto's atmosphere indicates that the nitrogen reservoirs on the surface are kept warm by heat trapped beneath the surface. However, the latest data shows that they are starting to cool. Therefore, the new observations of Pluto in 2018 help scientists understand not only the atmosphere of this dwarf planet, but also how it stores and releases heat. The pluto charon system. Pluto may be classified as a dwarf planet, but it has a celestial dance influenced by several factors. Its orbit is significantly inclined compared to the ecliptic plane, and it undergoes cyclical oscillations around a specific point. This behavior is influenced by a significant moon named Charon. With a diameter of 753 miles, Charon is larger than half the diameter of 1,477 miles of Pluto, making it the largest moon known relative to its parent planet in our solar system. Both Pluto and Charon orbit around a common center of mass between them, blurring the distinction between planet and moon. More precisely, Pluto and Charon form a binary planet system. Tidal interactions between Pluto and Charon have reduced their common orbit into a near-perfect circle and slowed their rotation around their axes to match precisely the 6.4-day cycle of their common orbit. Thus, the same face of Pluto always faces Charon, and the same face of Charon always faces Pluto. An observer 
living in the hemisphere opposite to Charon's view of Pluto, will always see Pluto in the same position overhead and vice versa for an observer on Pluto looking up at Charon. Charon, Charon was discovered in June 1978 by James Christie and Robert Harrington. The discovery of Charon was entirely serendipitous as they were initially seeking Pluto's orbit around the Sun rather than its companions. When Christie keenly noticed that Pluto's image appeared elongated peculiarly, resembling a blotch of uneven color attached to it. Moreover, the blotch itself seemed to be moving around Pluto in an elongated direction, completing a cycle of to and fro movement in 639 days. From this observation, Christie and Harrington deduced that Pluto possessed either a towering mountain thousands of kilometers high or a satellite orbiting synchronously. Searching through their archives of Pluto images taken years before, Christie found more cases where Pluto appeared strangely elongated. Working independently, Christie measured the angle from north where the elongations appeared while Harrington calculated what the answer should be if the elongation was caused by an orbiting satellite. When the anxious moment came for them to compare their answers, they found perfect agreement. Just to be sure, they waited for the Naval Observatory 60-inch telescope to make one more confirmation. And sure enough, on July 2nd, new images showed the elongation due to a satellite right where it was supposed to be. They announced their discovery to the world on July 7th, 1978. Christie proposed the name Charon, after the mythological ferryman who carried souls across the river Acheron, one of the five mythical rivers that surrounded Pluto's underworld. Apart from the mythological connection for this name, Christie chose it because the first four letters also matched the name of his wife, Charlene. The status of Charon as a satellite was eventually confirmed when Pluto and Charon began a series of mutual eclipses in 1985. Subsequently, both the Hubble Space Telescope and even advanced ground-based telescopes were able to detect Charon, orbiting just four thousandth of a degree away from Pluto. Unfortunately, a significant portion of Charon was not captured within the view of the New Horizons spacecraft's camera. However, many intriguing features on the visible surface of this celestial body can still be observed. For example, to the south of the equator, lies a vast region known as Vulcan Planum. Although its exact area has not been determined, it spans at least 400,000 kilomatarit, equivalent to the size of an average European country. Within Vulcan Planum, there is the towering peak of Kubrick Mons, with a diameter of approximately 40 kilometers and an estimated height reaching 4,000 meters. Surrounding the mountain is a wide circular moat plunging to a depth of two kilometers. Some hypotheses suggest that Kubrick Mons might be a cryovolcano, with the surrounding environment sinking due to the amplification of underground reservoirs. To the north lies the expansive Oz Terra, marked by numerous volcanic vents and separated from Vulcan Planum by a system of towering ridges and fissures. Among these, Serenity Chasma stands out, stretching 200 kilometers in length and reaching depths of up to 7 km. Further north, near the pole, lies the massive Mordor Macula, with a diameter of 475 km. Its origin remains controversial, with a common hypothesis suggesting that nitrogen and methane from Pluto's atmosphere have been drawn by Charon's gravitational pull and settled at its poles, gradually forming tholins under ultraviolet radiation. However, much of the mystery surrounding Charon remains unanswered, as research is still in its infancy. Despite being one of the most intriguing structures in the solar system, much of the Pluto-Charon system remains largely unexplored. Unfortunately, the New Horizons spacecraft departed the vicinity long ago, and these celestial bodies are rapidly moving farther away, taking their secrets with them. Currently, the spacecraft is more than 50 astronomical units away from Earth, occasionally transmitting important data. By around 2030, its systems may fail, leaving the spacecraft alone in the vastness of space. However, we can look forward to future wonders, 
as secrets are always unveiled in the final moments. Thank you for joining us on this journey. If you found it interesting, please like and subscribe to our channel for more useful information. Goodbye, and see you in the next videos.